Okay, session is recording. Yeah, session is recording. Good day, guys. Welcome to another Zoom session. Um, this is like Zoom session, what? 15 now, I guess. I'm not too sure. I lost track. Too many sessions. You know, I've got to share the knowledge. So, welcome to another session, guys. Um, nice vibes on your background. Yeah, I took a break. I'm in Miami, guys. I'm joking. Um, you know, welcome back, guys. I need I always emphasize this, guys. It's important to start with the first Zoom session, guys. Like, you see, from Zoom session one to Zoom session four, that's like a full on Forex course, guys. Teaching you how to draw trend lines, all that, guys. And then the next four sessions from four, four and five, or like four and five, are focused on psychology. And then the rest are just pure straight analysis, guys. So you need to start from the first Zoom session. You're not going to buy a book and then open it and start reading from page 45. No, of course you'll be lost. Of course you'll be lost because you didn't start on page one. You need to start from Zoom session one and move up. You can't just start on Zoom session eight and then expect to understand everything. You know what I mean? So don't, don't rush. Don't rush the knowledge. Don't rush to become profitable, guys. It took me six months. It took me six hard months. First month, I was like, I hey, don't need to learn everything. Until I realized that I know knowledge is power, you know, you learn back test, you know. So, yeah. <clears throat> so that's just a, a formula, you know. And also another thing I want to say, reason why I started the charts. So the reason why I started the Zoom session on this screen over here on TradingView is because a lot of people ask me how many, a lot of people, a lot of people always say to me, why is it I only analyze a few pairs? Guys, listen, like if you focus, how do I say this? Imagine you have a hundred chickens, right? Let's say you own a chicken farm, right? It's going to be easier to manage five chickens and a hundred chickens, meaning that you'll be able to take good care of your five chickens compared to your hundred chickens because they are fewer and you can focus on them more. You'll be able to see all of them. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, guys, the less pairs, the better. The less pairs, the more profitable, actually. Um, the more profitable you you are. Me, in the beginning, I used to analyze all the pairs, all majors, minors, exotics, everything. guys, And then I'd literally screenshot all of them and try to look at all of them at once. Now, nah, guys, that thing only messes you up up here. What you need to do as a trader is you need to analyze five max, six max for the week for the week that test that that grows you as a trader psycho psychologically guys me i analyze max seven and that's only because that's and that's only because you know i do it for mentorship but me on my own guys before i started teaching people i used to analyze five pairs okay so i used to analyze seven and then i'll pick four four to five pairs that i'll trade for the week if those that setup does not happen it doesn't happen if that setup goes against me it goes against me if that setup makes me profit makes me profits guys you need to have rules guys you need to have rules now imagine you have 100 chickens running in your yard it's gonna be hard it's gonna it's gonna be hard for you to 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 um look after those chickens guys whereas if you have five chickens you can literally see them in front of you You're like okay you you you're usd nasdaq us 30 german 40 german 30 you know now imagine german nasdaq Euro JPY, use these are everything. No, guys, you need to trust me. Seven pairs max, even seven is too much when you're beginning. Five, five max, five max, guys. So, yeah, what I do is, of course, uh, open trading view, I analyze from majors to minors. I'm analyze everything, right? Sometimes I don't even analyze everything. No, sorry, I'll take that back. I analyze my majors. As a trader, you need to know what works for you. For you. Me, it's majors, guys. The majors, they work for me. You know, I like my majors, you know. So you can see there's one, there's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven majors, right? From these majors, I analyze all of them and I've been like, okay, let me take three max, you know, three, four max, you know. And then obviously I'll take NASDAQ indice, US 30 indice, you know. So that's six already. And then maybe seven with gold, you know what I mean? And then maybe like another one with, um, like with the minor, with minor pairs, you know, and it's not guaranteed that all, from all these seven pairs, there will be a setup 
that week. Like all these, all of these players are not going to present a setup that works for us. Maybe only one or two. You know what I mean? This guy talking about me. I trade almost fourteen players. Don't do that. Don't do that. Imagine I have one thousand rand accounts, but you want to trade fourteen pairs. You know, with that one thousand rand, focus on two pairs. You know, so yeah, guys. Eh? So bottom line is, stick less pairs. The less, the the less, the less, the less pairs, the better, guys. Trust me. Think about it. Imagine that's why at school we take seven subjects. Seven subjects. You know, imagine now if you took all subjects, all fourteen. I don't even know how many subjects there were. Fourteen subjects. It's going to be hard for you. It's going to be hard. Think about this. It might sound like a stupid example, but. 14 subjects, you won't be able to cope. Coming home every single day, you have to do homework for 14 subjects. Nah, that's why you choose subjects in high school. You choose the subjects, you know? So same thing like this, guys. You need to treat trading like real life. You need to treat, you need to treat trading like school, guys. You study, you learn. You know what I mean? Focus, everything. So, yeah. Seven pay standard, yeah. So that's just an advice. Because, yeah, I wanted to address this because... I analyze like seven pairs, right? And maybe from those seven pairs for the week, um, maybe only two or three pairs will present a setup, you know? And that's fine because at least I stuck to my rules. You know what I mean? Trading is all about sticking to your rules, guys. Sticking to your rules and um, yeah, following your trading plan. So, hey, <sighs> enough of the talking. Let's get straight into analyzing, guys. Um, so let's let's get started. Okay, so you you starting on Nas Central guys. Every single week is the same thing, same thing. The whole zooming out thing three three to four times. One two three. All right, so zoom out so you can just see, you no, know, see your chart clearly. See your chart clearly. Like when you open a book, you're not gonna open your book and read it from here. You're gonna open it and read it from a distance. You know, so same thing here, guys. You wanna look from a distance and connect our train lines. Yeah, I can see someone's doing their homework while on the Zoom session. Okay. Um. So connect our train line on. You connect our train line on our lows, guys. So one, two. Three, four, five. So you can see we have our up. We all know that Nasdaq is moving in a channel, guys. All right. So if you've been keeping up with the Zoom sessions, you know this. Even in this third move, we called it. Okay. So and then do the same thing on our highs. Okay. Sorry, that trend line was not drawn properly. One, two here, three. All right. No way. Yeah, that was a fake out over there, just like this, guys. As you can see, we have our first touch, second touch, third touch, third touch, entry points. You can see that it dropped, right? Nasdaq came back down to the to our upper trend line, bounced off, and we were anticipating a reversal over here. In fact, it actually broke. This is actually a fake out. Long story short, this is a fake out. How do you know it was a fake out? It's because, okay, close above giving us indication that, okay, we're gonna continue buying. We know it actually ended up closing below the trend line and yeah, we can anticipate sales. So we all know guys, simple textbook stuff, what goes up has to come down. So eventually NASDAQ will reach this trend line here. So we wanna move with the trend. We don't wanna go against the trend. You don't wanna be selling when it's buying, you don't wanna be buying when it's selling. So now we know that, okay, sales on NASDAQ will be more comfortable will be more comfortable with sales looking at overall structure right and like i say guys every single pullback is an entry point so let me just mark this low over here all right and mark this high over here and let's go down to this four hour time frame <laughs> now guys once the trend line has been okay, basically what I do is guys, okay, we know that we have I'm touching the screen as if we can we know that we have this over here, we have this trend line over here, right? But just for the sake of keeping our charts clean, we're gonna delete it, right? It's in our minds that okay, 
this these lows over here, the the trend line, um, trend line bounced off these lows over here. Because looking at it, you can see. There we go. So it's in our mind, guys, that it's in our mind that um there's a trend line here. There was a trend line. This is just a fake out that I'm closing below. So just for the sake of keeping our analysis clean, we delete that. So we have our we have our high and our low, all-time high and our current low, right? Again, like I always say, zoom out three to four times, one, two, three. Let's see what we can do. In this case, there isn't really much we can do. Let's see if we can connect. The trend line, you can see that it's pretty much choppy, you know? So let's just focus on current market price. Let's not zoom out too much now, right? So you can see that we we didn't get anything solid over here, right? What do we see here? We can connect a trend line on our lows. So we have touch number one. Sorry, we have touch number one. <laughs> one. Two. Touch number one. I want to copy this. Touch number two. What are we anticipating? Touch number three, right? But remember, look at the overall, look at the bigger picture, bigger picture. We can look at bigger picture and momentum. We can see that the market is pretty bearish guys pretty pretty bearish you can see that the, the the selling candles are stronger than the buying candles you see like yeah so then now what do we we like we more in favor of sales right so where can we possibly get sales we can get sales over here one and over here two this is the four hour time frame Right, so the market is currently over here, guys. We can simply wait for the market to, two things could happen. I remember we trade what we see, we don't predict the market, but I'm just telling you the possible possibility, possible outcomes, right? The market could retrace back down to the trend line for a third touch to move all the way up to this high over here. And then carry on with our um, bearish movements. Or if we look carefully, if we go down the time frame, remember it's always important to go down the time frame. So we finished analyzing for our time frame. We drew in our trend line. We spotted our high and our low. Let's go down to the one hour time frame. <coughs> Excuse me. Zoom out again, like I said, three, two, wait. Zoom out again, one, two, three. Okay, just two times it's fine because we only focus on current market price. Um, so we lost my tra track of thoughts. Okay, we do. Oh yeah, now we look. We there's this. We look. We look left, and you can pretty much see that there's this high over here. I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's standing out, guys. So let's draw this in. <laughs> no, just identifying zones or points where the market could reverse okay this thing is in our way ah uh, uh, this thing just resets hold on guys Eesh. oh wee. one second i pressed the space bar one second i do apologize about that must get a mouse okay so as i was saying every time from you go down guys when we look to connect our trend lines we'll draw in our highs and our lows right so let's see trend line first touch second touch extended a bit down just like that right so you can see that both trend lines have presented two touches we are yet we are still waiting for a third touch right so again another zone another 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 point of interest okay we have a first touch we have a second there we're just looking at the probabilities um and we can anticipate a third somewhere around here right but again remember guys as i said you want to be moving with the trend you want to go against the trend 
so we can be more comfortable with sound. You can see first touch, second touch, third touch. So in the two zones I'm looking to sell is this train line over here or at this side over here. So we'll so patiently wait to see how NASDAQ react, reacts to this, how we have to this zone. Let me just zoom in a bit. We'll patiently wait to see how NASDAQ reacts to this zone over here. So you can see we have one, you know, and I'll wait for number two. That's it. No need to complicate things. If the zone is respected, then cells will be valid on NASDAQ. Just like this. Tight stop loss just above CP will be the previous low. So let me just delete all this. What I'm deleting, just leave um your your thoughts in the chat if you guys understand. Uh, so I don't move on without people not understanding. So do me just yeah, just leave your message in the chat so I make sure we're all on the same page. I know we're all on the same page. Yeah, I think I'll be more comfortable with sales on this, honestly speaking. Understood. Clear like a beach view. <laughs> okay, I've also been looking at ways to interact with um, everyone, you know. Like I started doing this thing of screenshot the Zoom session, post it, screenshot the Zoom session and post on Instagram. And I spam you back, follow you back, respond to your DMs, talk to you. So yeah, guys. According to Volpin, I see a buy. I mean, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, guys. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I still am doing that thing where you guys screenshots. You can even take the screenshot now. Screenshots, post on Instagram, interact. It's just a way of me interacting because WhatsApp, I get too busy. So yeah, let's move on to the next setup. Okay, everyone understands. Next setup is US 30. This thing is slow. Stay with me. Connection unstable. Okay. Starts US 30 from the daily time frame. US 30 guys, the same thing every week. Same thing every week from the daily time frame. Right now, we don't want to draw in our support zone because you can see it's far from current market price. Like I said in the last Zoom session, we focus on current market price. We know that, okay, this previous how is broken, retested. I explained this in the last session, you know. So just to save time, we're gonna cut all of this out. We're gonna focus on current market price, current structure. <laughs> so from the daily time frame, we can just plot in our high and You just plot in the high. So this thing froze high and this low over here, right? Move down to H4. Move down to H4. Right, let me just delete this over here. So, because now it's confusing me, not gonna lie. Okay, there we go. Just like NASDAQ, right? A high and a low, but we can actually see we have some sort of a falling channel or we have a channel, yes, right? We can basically, so we connect our trend line first touch, my bad, first touch, second touch, third touch, right? So now let me just delete this because it don't make more sense with trend line, right? So you can see first touch, second touch, third touch. Obviously, third touch is our entry point. However, we don't just enter the market when we don't just enter a trade when um when the market touches our trend line. Obviously, we look for confirmation, change of momentum, uh, reversal candlesticks, you know, things like that. 
So this is interesting. At least we know, okay, sitting on our trend line for the third touch. Let's see, let's look for proper confirmation, right? So if we draw it in again properly, like that, you see that we're pretty much sitting on the third touch, right? But however, it's also um, draw in our zones. We can see that we have this previous hour over here. Right, so US 30 is a bit tricky right now. You can also draw in our parallel trend line. <laughs> One, two, get a nice clean third touch. There we go. Simplicity is key, guys. You don't need to overthink things. Right now, yes, you can see that your city is sitting on the trend line. Right. Um, but we need to be patient and wait for proper confirmation to sell. Right? Because you can actually see we have an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Um, left shoulder. This is the left shoulder. So, left shoulder, head, and this over here is our right shoulder. Pretty choppy, but still the setup, right? And in between shoulders is a is a is a is a, is a bullish reversal, is a buying pattern, guys. You know, it shows it shows um signs. It's a sign that we can expect buys in the market, right? So the reason I say this is a bit tricky and easy for proper confirmation is because you want to see, you want to see, you want to wait and see how US thirty reacts to this trade line and this high over here. If this trade line is broken, if this trade line is intersected, and we get a retest, then buyers are valid and sells are actually invalidated. However, if the next candlestick is that bearish, then we can anticipate sells on US thirty. Right? It might sound a bit complicated, but we need to be patient with this one. Wait, if this if the US 30 closes above the trend line and above this high, so if we get something like this, boom, then you simply need to wait for a retest, then to continue with the buys. Or if US 30 actually ends up closing below the high, then we can separate sales. But we'll provide more updates as the market plays out. We now click this stupid advert. So let me know what you think of US 30 in the chat. Usually Mondays, the market is shaky. So Mondays do not, like used indices are not into indices on Mondays. Currency pays, yes, but indices now. So let me know what you guys think in the chat before I move on. <laughs> Let's get a haircut. Yeah. Oh, uh, excuse me. About right. All right, let's move. Let's move on. What's next? It should be a currency. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simplicity is key. I say the same thing every week, guys. Simplicity is key. Like, proper confirmation will do. Yeah, you just need this one, you need to be patient. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll burn you. All right? So, this is GBP USD. GBP USD, we have the same analysis from last week. I'm just not going to delete it because I just want to save time. I want to get through the other pairs. We have gold. USD, JPY, AUD, USD, and Euro GBP. So Euro GBP, USD, you can see daily time frame. Same analysis from last week, guys. We had this. At this low over here, and identify it. Identified, yes, sorry. Identified it. And we had another one over here. That makes this a double double possible pattern. So low one, low two, and number three here. Yeah. And this is actually we capitalize. This is where we capitalize off the buys 
I still have the thing, yeah, on TP was here on this one. Remember there was that inverse head and shoulders, yeah. So yeah, right. And then number four, number three, sorry, makes it a triple bottom, right? So you can pretty much see, looking at the chart guys, you can tell that this, this zone here is a very, very strong zone. The market has been moving and reacting off this zone like, a lot, you know, and impulsively too. I mean, look at this one here, boom, the touch again, right? But now what happened was the market actually, I'm just gonna delete this, everything simple, because the straight line is far from the market price. What actually happened was the daily candle stick closed below this low over here, this low over here. So when this happens, we anticipate a retest and then sell, right? Simple breakouts and retests, just like the trend lines, it's the same here, guys. Breakout, retest, this is the retest phase, right? So it'll make sense when I go down to H4, this is the retest phase. You can see it's that exact same zone. Broke out, closed below, shot all the way down, now it retraced back up. Retraced up, why? Retraced up for the retest. So let's go down to H4. So everything will make sense. <coughs> And this connection is slow. So there we go. Looking at H4, you can actually see hey, running out of time. Meeting will end. Looking at H4, you can pretty much see that we did actually get a retest. This was a breakout over here. Okay, now let me not use this thing. Here's our breakout, right? Got a retest in the market shut down. Right, and I'll retrace back up to PSD, retraced all the way back up to this zone over here with the where those lows are for another retest. So here's retest number two, retest one, retest two. Simple breakouts, retest sells are valid on GPUSD until when until this low because this is the point that where the market is most likely to reverse. So sales are valid on GBP USD. Simple. Simplicity is key. So just leave a, a chat in the comment. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is proper. You can even scale in on the breakouts of the trend line. So you can scale in around here, yeah, breakout resets and scale in more. Yeah, everything is good. Oh yes, guys. Simplicity, Aye. for real. No need to complicate this thing. You see breakout retest tickets. If it goes against you, it's fine. At least you did, at least you applied your knowledge. You know what I mean? You applied your knowledge. No risk, no reward. You never know that trade could just be the one, guys. So this is gold, right? We have eight minutes left. Ish, my thing is red. Um, oh, guys, I'm zooming out so you can see everything clearly. Yo. So you can pretty much see we have this downward drain line. One. One. Two. Shucks. Okay, so then obviously here we were anticipating a third touch, however we did not get that third touch, you can pretty much see that the market actually broke out, right? So just like anyone else, me, I would be expecting sounds over here, but over here, reason being, it would be third touch of the downward trend line and this how we had this this resistance level of resistance but in fact you can actually see that gold actually just shot up right and now if, if you were actually a patient trader and waited for confirmation and yeah, this actually would have taken out anyone because i would have seen this kind of stick and i would have taken that as confirmation so yeah some that can happen happens where sometimes you know it goes against us 
Now looking at that zone, the zone is now the key. The key is the lock to the lock. Eh? It's the key to the lock. Yo, this zone over here, you can pretty much see that it did respect a little bit. So again, those who took sounds on this zone over here would have been in profits for a little bit and then just impulsively shot up, guys. And that's normal, right? So overall, guys, looking at looking at the daily time frame, you can see that the bullish movement, bullish momentum is extremely strong. Simple setup. We simply wait for gold to reach this high over here for sounds. However, we can still capitalize off this buying movement. High, how? You can, you can capitalize off this buying movement. How? By by entering on a retest of a broken high. Meaning, as you can see here, we have our first high, second high, right? Obviously, closed above. Closed above, got a retest. That's why it's shooting up now. So in gold, you just need to wait for. Um, it's, it's a bit too late now, hey? Unless gold retraces, and then you can go in again. But I will provide more updates on gold. So this is USD JPY, guys. USD JPY actually gave us a fake out. I'm rushing because there's five minutes left. <coughs> USD JPY gave us a fake out. You can see that overall, end of the day, the daily candles did close below our trend line. You can see that daily candles did close below our trend line. First touch, second touch, third touch. This is just a wick, guys. No, this is why it's important to trade bigger time frames. I will. So that's important to trade bigger time frame. You don't get caught on the wrong side of the market. Right. So yeah, you can see that was just a uh just a fake out, guys. So we saw the daily candlestick major rejection. It we are entering a trade in the middle of the movement, but it's still valid. USD JPY will reach the zone over here. Well, sounds are valid on USD JPY. I'm rushing because now there's four minutes left. Same setup. Our USD, AUD, USD. You can see that market broke out our structure. Right. Now we're just waiting for a clear, a simple retest of the trade line or the zone. In this case, more likely the zone because you can see we have two touches on the zone. Let's go down to H4. This is textbook stuff. Low, 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 boom. Support, 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 support. Workout resistance. We've got our first retest. Waiting for retest number two. AUD, USD. This right here, Euro, Euro GBP, is actually valid for buys right now. It's valid for buys right now. You can see that we connected our trend line on our lows clearly, cleanly. First touch, second touch, third touch, fourth touch, fifth touch. This is all. This trend line has been respecting. EOGB has been respecting this trend line. So, yeah, there's two minutes left in the Zoom session, guys. I do apologize for rushing in the last few closing minutes. I just wanted to get everything in. And, um, yeah. Okay, let me see. Same setup. I like how you analyze. Yeah. Shout out, guys. So let's just wait for Tuesday, Tuesday. Let's wait for Tuesday. Um, but like I said, GBUSD is valid. And USD JPY is valid. And Euro GBP is valid. I'm going to send these out. But as in for NASDAQ, let's wait for NASDAQ to play out and USD to wait for that proper confirmation. So yeah, I'm looking at the chats. Let's see. Knowledge is power. Take a screenshot of the Zoom session. If you want to enter, inside one. Yes, currencies, yes, one. <clears throat> Excuse me, inside one. Remember guys, don't forget, um, take a screenshot of the charts. You can take a screenshot of the charts. Tag my personal page, and you can type the business page if you want, but take, tag personal page. I will be reposting. I don't even take a video of the Zoom session. Online Zoom session, not a vibes. Another vibes online zoom session. Um, yeah, just and then I'll interact. Yeah, so 
enjoy rest of your guys' nights. Stay safe. And yeah, that's the end of the Zoom meeting. You know, the vibe's awesome. Always, I hope the, the, the discussion group is helping. So yeah, simplicity charts once again, yeah. Shout out guys, all the best. I'm gonna stop the meeting now.